Okay guys, I'm just getting ready for a trip from um, Perth to Melbourne. It's going to be about 4,200 kilometers. Um, so I'm just finalizing my gear setup. Done a couple of little bits of upgrades. Um, switched out uh, light proof, went for quad locks. Changed pedals. Um, just testing these out at the moment, see if they're going to be suitable uh, by pedal innovation and obviously picked up a helmet, uh, Australian Laws. So I've got a few things to decide still uh, on my setup. Then one of them is, you know, the medical kit. I've got to basically uh, fine tune it uh, for like ticks and stuff I find and bites, um, insect bites in Australia. So I'll be doing that over the next couple of days. Uh, another thing I'm still deciding on Will I take my pack raft? Um, there's a couple reasons for it and there's a couple reasons against it. It's like one of those things, if I don't take it, I'm going to regret it when I see some amazing coastlines and some amazing water. Um, and then there's going to be times when I'm on a 500 uh, kilometer straight and there's nothing, nothing there at all. So it'd be like, oh, you know, why did I bring it? You know, so still deciding. Um, I picked up the new, what do you call it, uh, longer sea post bag. So this pack wrap fits into it. Um, or I've got the small one, and the small one, what do you call it, um, it's just got some rain gear in it. Now, regarding my setup, um, which I'll go over in detail later on, uh, basically what I've done is categorized everything as usual. Um, one bag, first aid kit, gadgets, sleep system, etc. Um, even with the whole thing fully loaded with food and water, so I'm be able to carry six bottles of water in, in this setup. Even with it fully loaded, I still have 10 liters of space, which is a new thing I'm working on is to be able to carry, have extra space even after I filled the whole thing up uh, with food and stuff. So um, if I do do the pack raft, I will lose about five liters of that space and only have an additional five liters of space. So uh, I picked up a few things as I said, I'm still fine tuning it. Um, the other thing I have to decide is what solar panel and this is what this video is about. So hopefully um, this will save you guys some money. Um, I've been buying solar panels for years. Uh, so. Certain things I didn't know that I know now that will definitely save you guys some money. Uh, so I started off with um, the reason why I wanted to go solar panel because I knew it'd be bikepacking in hot countries and sun wouldn't be an issue. The other thing was once I get to camp, I realized that what he called I maybe want to stay a few days. And if I was running a Dyma Hub, obviously I wouldn't be generating any power. So the solar panel for me was a better option. I know people who do bikepacking tours that are using solar panel and dyna hubs. I know people who are just using dyna hubs, especially for the racing. I also guys know guys who are just using battery banks because of the technology nowadays. Um, so, but for me, solar panel was the way to go. Like most people, I started off with goal zero. Um, what do I think of goal zero? Okay, um, goal zero is very good at branding uh, i get a little bit closer okay um goal zero is very good at branding okay uh and they're very good at marketing so what is their product like um when i first started researching it i should have watched uh some videos on voltage amps uh 2a 1a um I should have watched that sort of stuff, but I didn't. I just went for the concept of the bigger the solar panel and the more power I get, which now I know is not actually true. So my experience with Gold Zero was, first of all, I paid over $550 for the panel and the battery. Oh. So there's the battery, it's a Shepard 100. Okay, they come in around about $300. Um, and then the panel itself was another $200. With an adapter is another $50. So, um, 
My experience, why do I have two? Actually, I have three of them. Not because I like them. What it is, is uh, basically after three months, this one failed. They sent me a new one, but they wouldn't ship to me in the other or into this country. So I had to get it uh, shipped from the United States, which cost me another 100. So I'm up to about $650 for this system. Um, and then it broke after another six months. And eventually I talked them into sending one. So uh, at this point, I realized Goal Zero is very good at marketing, very good at branding, really good at marketing, really good at branding. But their product, for me, maybe other people say different, but for me, it's just not great, you know? I wouldn't even take it now with me, um, a Goal Zero product at all, because I don't think it's reliable, um, and it's definitely overpriced. So, um, I decided, uh, after I got the new battery, um, and I was doing some testing with the USB to see what the output is, this is what I didn't realize. The maximum output of this is 2A, 2A. Um, this is the maximum output. My phone only can handle 2A, my battery bank can only handle 2A. So the maximum output is 2A, and it's a 20 watts panel. So for me, after, I think it was about a year, the USB part, which is in here, all these things, it stopped working. So this for me is useless now. All we do now is we just keep this one at home and we use it for when the electric goes out to power the Wi-Fi. That's all we do. So for me, uh, definitely not a goal zero product. Um, then started looking at Anchor. All right, this is a, tw um, I believe this one's a 21 watt panel. Um, Anchor has a great reputation. Uh, for their battery bank. This is a 26,000 battery bank and it is well made, reliable, charges my phone 10 times. Now this one has an output of 3A but what when you actually test it what it is is one of the USB outputs is 1A and the other one is 2A but actually when you run it through the meter what I found was the best I could get out of it was 1.6 out of the 2A one. So that one um, isn't giving me the maximum, even though it's a 21 watt uh, panel. So at this point, I was talking to a friend and he even told me, well, Anchor doesn't even make the solar panels. I was like, what? He says, yeah, they don't make them. Anchor makes the battery. They just subcontract. They have a supplier in China and they put their logo on. Also the same thing with Gold Zero. Um, Gold Zero have a supplier in China for their uh, solar panels. They do some changes and obviously put their logo on it, um, but they're not specifically factory making solar panels. Um, they're all subcontracted. So at this point, uh, I was talking to a friend and he has basically, he's got himself, um, he has a yacht, and I was down at his yacht and I seen that he had really nice solar panels and I says, oh, you got new solar panels? He says, no, no, they're four years old. And he says, the mistake what you're doing is you're going to these companies that are targeting the hiker instead of actually going to the people who actually make solar panels. So um, I contacted this company, Link Solar, um, and I ordered the flexible one, all right? Just as, um, cause I was looking for something more durable. This can be bent like 5,000 times or some testing. Now it is bigger, this one, and it is a 12 watt. The output is 2A. I have tested it and it gives me 2A every single time. Um, um, especially in the sunlight we have here. Um, so compared to the anchor it was only giving me 1.6A output. This was giving me 2A output. So it charges the anchor battery, no problem. Charges my phone, no problem. It's um, durable, flexible. This one's four months old and it still looks brand new. This one is actually a year old, but I stopped using it after about six months. Um, so it's pretty beat up, rust everywhere and the material and the stitching starting to come out. So 
what, what I realized was um, I didn't need 20 watt panel because at the end of the day, if it's a 20 watt panel or a 21 watt panel, the output's still only 2A, you know? So why should I buy a 20 watt when I can get away with a 12 watt or a 15 watt, you know? Um, so that's a thing that um, I didn't realize. Um, at the end of the day, it's what the output is, um, which is important. So now, um, this is great, it's really flexible, it's durable, it's a little bit bigger because it's using a different type of material. Um, so it's a bit of a sacrifice for the, the length. Um, but then, the same company made this, and I'll show you this, this is sweet. This is 11 watt by Link Solar. 11 watt panel the output when I tested using the USB a meter was coming out at 2a Which is exactly what my my battery bank can handle and my phone can handle my phone can't handle anymore So I don't need a huge panel. It's very light. I believe it's like god. I believe it's something like oh, I gotta remember I'll have to look it up. I'll make a comment in the description, but it's it's extremely light also it folds different texture 11 watts 2a output so it charges my phone charges my battery in the same time as the anchor actually that one charges much faster um, and previously before the gold zero broke that was um, um, basically still charging better so this basically cost $650, okay, not working. Um, solar panel stopped working, replaced three times, wouldn't take it on a trip if you paid me. Anchor, great battery, take the battery everywhere with me, great product. They just don't make the solar panels and you can see the condition of it. It's pretty beat up after four months and it will not give me my full output of 2A. Um, this one is great by Link Solar, a um, little bit too big. But obviously because of the different types of material they're using. Um, output is 2A. It'd be great if you had a trailer, put it on the back of a trailer. But this one, oh, um, I believe for the, the anchor, it paid 130 for the anchor, but I've seen them as low as 70. And obviously the battery, I paid over 100 um, in Vietnam for the battery with the charger. Um, this one, this little link, okay, is only $49. So that's $49, gives me my 2A, um, 2A output, really durable. Um, I think that's the way to go. Why pay over $650 and $49 and with the anchor battery? Now, what I'm doing is um, I got a waterproof, well, semi waterproof uh, battery bank, it's 5,000. I'm also switched the lights to a Nor Nog light. Love it. It's, got, it's actually a battery bank, so basically I can use. It's a 5,000 uh, milliamp battery bank. I can use this as well um, for charging. Uh, so I'm basically just solar panels, just charging this battery bank, charging my light, and charging my backlight by the same company, Nog. So, and it charges my GoPros and things they got there. So. Hopefully, this is not too long of a video. So um, as I say, I'll get back to packing. But if you're looking to get into solar, 12 watts with 2A output, Link Solar is the way to go. I mean, you can't go wrong. And definitely still go back to the Anchor uh, battery. Uh, take that with you. I mean, you got 10 days worth of charge there for your phone alone. So hopefully that was information was good if you haven't subscribed subscribe have a great week guys the link solar 13 watt portable solar panel is the most efficient compact and hassle-free charging solution for any USB powered device including tablets 
comes with three banks of top of the line SunPower Maxion cells, giving 13 watts. That's more than two amps of power at 5.5 volts. So you can charge a tablet, phone, battery bank, GoPro, sometimes even faster than you can with a standard wall outlet. Using the ring loops, you can hang it from your vehicle or camping setup, hang it from your backpack or ruck, you can roll it out onto your bonnet, lay it next to you while you have lunch, or leave it virtually anywhere you choose to charge in full sun or partly cloudy conditions so you don't need to be near a traditional power supply. You won't find this practicality in any other brand panel. Built for the rugged, anti-reflective, hard-wearing ETFE coating, it makes a Lynx Solar portable 13 watt panel not only waterproof but flame resistant as well. You can take this outside and never have to worry about camp spills or rain, damaging your panel, or about fires from short circuits due to water, unlike other cheap canvas stitch panels on the market. Using the high performance iSmart IC USB charging ports, it will automatically regulate the output when going from shade to full sun, or when nearing a full charge on your phone, to prevent overcharging. Simply plug a USB cable to the port on the panel and connect your device. No need to worry about connecting solar charge controllers or other attachments, it's that simple. With its three-fold design and riveted button latch, it's straightforward, rugged and compact enough to take with you anywhere, whether you're four-wheel driving, fishing, camping or hiking. So order one today for peace of mind on your next outdoor trip.